The Square Ball Podcast. Propaganda is brought to you by Levi Solicitors, who will offer you a 10% discount on your legal fees at levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. The three of us on Propaganda today, me, Dan, Michael's here as well, and there's Rob on the opposite side of the table. And Propaganda is the show where we find out what's been said about Leeds United, and this one is in the wake of the Aston Villa game, uh, three all. So we do this in two bits. First half is when we talk about what the Leeds reaction is and then the second half is where we talk about what the away reaction is or the opposition reaction rather so let's start on Leeds and uh it was good fun wasn't it and that's the one of the overriding themes of the the feedback from our TSB plus members who were saying uh it was a rollicking game I think that's one of the phrases you can use East and lower uh sorry East lower Paul says entertaining game but why can't we just be normal we don't want to be normal we're Leeds <laughs> we're exceptional yeah David Boyd as well felt like last season chaos fun yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, we, we did recapture some of that spirit. I mean, Phil was saying, we did the Phil Hay show just before this, um, saying that if we could have more games like that that are fun. And I said, what, like last season? And he said, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the thing coming into the Premier League. You don't want to come up here and be like just a team that sits in the mid-table and does nothing and he's, it just looks pretty soulless and boring. And as much as we were joking earlier on in the season about how this is going to kill us all, it is fun and I'd rather it be <laughs> this way uh, than the alternative. Yeah, actually, I'm saying it is, football is meant to be fun and entertaining, yeah. which I think is is often missing, isn't it? When you watch, you know, we keep, we keep picking when you, watch, when you watch Wolves or Burnley versus or, Watford. Yeah, well, it's such a it's such a preservationist league, is the Premier League, isn't it? Because you've got the teams at the top who are kind of running away with it all the time now, the main four or whatever five, and then you got everybody else who's just either trying to get into that dreadful Europa Conference League or just stay in stay in the division really. So as a result, everyone's kind of playing the old low block or whatever it's called, you know, where they sit deep in two banks of four on the edge of the area or even a four and a five and it's boring isn't it we're not boring we're great <laughs> when the game went full basketball at one all i was watching at home thinking yes i don't want us to play any other way this is amazing and then we went three one down i thought mm, actually <laughs> I, I didn't enjoy that but then it did swing back the other way like, yeah, oh, exactly. just before half time and we'll do a lot on dan james in a sec but um i couldn't help but feel as we said on the match ball last night michael i were like yeah we're gonna get something out of this nailed absolutely nailed on we've got them on toast here even though we're three two down i mean we felt like that at one nil though didn't we as well we were like we're gonna win this then okay we can still get something out <laughs> of it almost like goals falsely uh paint a false picture mm -hmm. of the way the game's gonna go the three two goal though the dan james had it felt like a goal that leads never score that felt mm. like a goal that we always concede just before half time in ridiculous circumstances so for us to score it was like oh maybe this isn't what normally happens this is good <laughs> just returning to that theme Andrew's saying it's absolutely not fair that we have to suffer the tension during our excellent football matches and suffer other teams being boring and organised it's correct correct we have to endure the Premier League don't we whereas we are making it better yeah like the neutral would have loved that yeah great advert for football great advert for the Premier League contrast with and we always say Burnley versus Watford <laughs> oh, sh shite game in, that, in the rain the thing is nobody had a nice time there Burnley Watford fans could because we've been I think we've Moscow's picked that out as the game all season that is like the example of a terrible game they could have had a good game and disproved it and said and showed him to be a fool but what they actually did <laughs> was ground out a dreadful <laughs> game. It was, gr was grind out a nil nil between them so well what can you do scrooge muck hutch is saying how fun it was this game last night and that's what football's about yes absolutely the absolute chaos from the away end would love to have seen that actually and you know up close because it's always good when uh, leads away ends are like that which is most weeks um, and he says, uh, well done, Dan James, the little scum bastard. <laughs> which, which is a great thing that's actually been threaded right through the Dan James feedback. Um, I like how it's kind of sticking in, in a fun way, in a way that Kasper Schmeichel would never understand or <laughs> sanction, would he, the humourless bastard. Like Alex um, Alex Marnie, who he has um, explained his the pronunciation, thankfully for us, which is good, but says, uh, the bloke behind me in the upper tier kept calling Dan James a little scum bastard. <laughs> he said, well done, you little scum bastard, after both goals. And when James refused to go off, he said, with genuine affection, keep running you little scum bastard <laughs> uh, excellent Lisa disappointed um, with his celebrations though he needs to get some good ones rather than looking just confused mm, yeah he's a bit, he does just wheel around it's because he I think he's, it's because he, he doesn't have to run at full pace and it, it confuses him to have to slow down he does generally look quite confused as Dan James a lot of the time doesn't he he likes a, uh, a knee slide doesn't he which I always feel like is the Premier League kind of default alright we'll just slide on his knees and, and you know this is the generic celebration I enjoyed um Luke Aylin's celebration for Lorente's goal, the winner, because that was the, the same end where he was 
in the roof game, the last minute winner, he was there in front of the, the stand with the flare behind him and stuff. But this time he was just kind of letting Diego have all the fun and give it a little, grab the Leeds badge and that was it. The knee slide as well. I am waiting for a footballer to get that wrong because I think I saw somebody tweeting about this saying, actually the knee slide, you've got to get it right. Because I was, I think knee ligaments, apart from knee ligaments, I also think if you don't lean back when your knee slide in, your body tends to stick in the in on the grass and you slam forward onto your face and i'm just waiting for somebody to do that hopefully not a leeds player mm-hmm. I mean, it would it would basically sum up our season if dan james <laughs> was to be out for the season from <laughs> from a knee slide but he's he's been great hasn't he so the last uh last few weeks i'd say i mean i, I know we the newcastle game it didn't work but really good at west ham scored against burnley best game last night maybe he's all right, the I, I do enjoy um, again David Boyd touching on the thing that we picked on in the match ball he says Dan James speaking for the entire fan base telling Roberts to stay on the bench oh bless Tyler Roberts um, we've, yeah, been, we've I, been told not to pick on Tyler we'll, Roberts we'll get on to that in a second me specifically uh, but I was going to say um, I love how it's been re- rewritten from are you alright seems to have been the conversation between the bench and Dan James we don't know because it was in close up on Dan James's face um, and he, the words fuck off were mentioned but I think he was just muttering to himself sort of saying gonna take me off fuck off kind of you know like, mm. and he just got caught by the cameras didn't he I don't think he was telling the bench directly to fuck off there is no way Dan James would tell Bielsa to fuck off <laughs> no. if he wanted to sub him off he would just walk off the pitch wouldn't he but um, we're not allowed to talk about that it's the unsayable thing isn't it somebody who um, ironically has put no name on their message says uh, with all the love in the world please stop singling out Rodrigo and Roberts it's tired it seems biased uh, Roberts didn't play. Rodrigo, by all objective measures, is one of the very, very best defensive players at Leeds. But his shortcomings, which he has, are always mentioned, implied by Dan. Uh, well, are we not allowed to talk about what players do? And <laughs> you've brought them up, no name. <laughs> so don't blame me. I mean, I, they, they probably have a point. I think I think the things with Rodrigo, we're never sure if it quite works with him in the system, is the thing. And he undoubtedly does some really good stuff, particularly in an attacking sense but it's just and, and it's also it's not biased it's just you've chosen to perceive it mm. that way and, and, I'm not because I'm not biased because I really like Rodrigo I just uh, I wish he had the engine to do all the work mm. that the other people do mm. but he doesn't but we were saying on the Phil Hay show if you've caught that uh, that maybe we can build a team around him that compensates for his lack of ability to run around like a headless chicken because you've got Dan James can do a lot of work in there Harrison does Rafinha does so you know maybe I'll be alright I mean they also draw the, the kind of comparison with they just say click was horrible actually in this which i i didn't think he was i thought he was all right in this game and other people did pick him out for being good but then and saying as well alien got rinsed over and well, over it's just, bi- it's just bias Michael. and we don't have a critical word against him which i admit is probably it's probably is a bias but that's because i like him yeah <laughs> no, and, I think, and that's what bias is I but think they've got credit in the bank i mean with alien we did say that coutinho made him look stupid didn't we yeah he did but you didn't hear that because I mean, he's just biased footballers do good and bad things in games don't they it's yeah. kind of how it works rodrigo i'm i'm kind of fascinated by him because he looks, there are times when he looks brilliant, and some of the passes he were playing last night, and just oh, the this way. This is the point, Rob. This is why this is why I bring it up because I find him as a concept yeah, interesting because yeah. he's clearly brilliant, isn't he? But uh, and the way he moves on the ball just looks classy, and I really like that. But then, yeah, like you say, the engine and the kind of physicality of playing in central midfield, he doesn't really have, which sometimes I think works against us. But you can obviously see what qualities he brings on the ball. I think with Rodrigo, I would just love to know if he was signed with the intention of playing him as a number nine or whether he was always signed with this role in mind because when he was signed it was presented as the alternative to Bamford and this is our new number nine and he's going to score loads of goals he's never really played number nine apart from the end of last season but this season when all the strikers have been injured he's still played as a number 10 so Bielsa clearly sees him in that position and you can see why because when it works and we're on the ball and he I mean he was great at Villa last season as well and he, uh, yeah he was very interesting last night he was yeah. actually bought as well a lot of people saw him as a replacement for Bamford mm. because Bamford had come up from the championship not being brilliant with you know club record fee being splashed out on this guy Spain's number nine you thought well he plays he plays yeah he, he, plays. he plays Bamford goes to the bench and as it was Bamford started that last season really well and has transformed himself into probably the first name on the team sheet if um, you know if he's actually fit but we're talking about him again and it seems biased Who? Rodrigo. Rodrigo. <laughs> this is the point. Like, what's the point of doing any of this if we can't talk about the footballers in the team well, and, and, and the it... topics that people talk about? Which is, I think we're still trying to find a place for exactly where Rodrigo fits. But actually, last night when I saw the team announced, um, while you kind of want Forshaw in there in midfield, which might have helped actually, you know, sort of close that chasm that Coutinho started having fun in, um, I was glad to see Rodrigo on the team sheet because for that silly reason in that. Uh, in the way that football throws up patterns and coincidences he has a good time at Villa Park he did last season and I got the sense that he'd probably have a good time again last night and he's a great player 
A few people picked up on the midfield, actually, to, to contrast with Click not being any good. Um, a few people pointed out he was brilliant in, in this game. <laughs> um, so it kind of goes goes on with opinions on it. Um, a, a couple of people as well, Adrian and um, Marky Mark, picking out that Forshaw might have steadied things a little bit in midfield, particularly with Coutinho kind of running things for that period. It did feel like he the game got away from us in there for a little while. But I think that's just it's just down to the players. We were just discussing this with, with Phil Hay saying that Cock is a natural centre back. Rodrigo is a natural striker. Click is a he's a, he's a more attacking in, inclinations, I would say, as a midfielder. So you end up with a you have a little bit of a void sometimes in the middle of a yeah. You got one one specialist midfielder out of three. Yeah, and he and him like Click, I think, naturally would be playing as a more attacking player, and he's he's asked to do some slightly more defensive work with Rodrigo there. So yeah, I I, I thought the midfield. For in an attacking sense, was great yesterday. I think uh, well, a click again, had a, a click had a couple of slightly weak shots that came to him on his left foot, and it was he didn't quite get a, a proper swing at him, did he? Mm, it, it felt a bit last night. So I I didn't think Click was great last night. I didn't think he was brilliant, but um, I didn't think he was terrible. Sorry, but um, yeah, it felt like both the good things and the bad things of our midfield last night were kind of as a consequence of how we play. So exactly, we had, exactly what I was going to say. We had yeah, yeah. Rodrigo and Click going forward and I think the one big difference from the Newcastle game which you saw with Dan James's first goal was Click and Rodrigo both running beyond him which gave him loads of space on the edge of the box it took their centre halves away and gave James um, space but then when we are playing teams like Newcastle who just pack players behind the ball um, there's no space for Dan James and Click and Rodrigo you know they might try and dominate the ball but they need to just keep getting beyond James and help him out a little bit but then likewise, you saw for Villa's third goal, I think it was, where it was Ramsey runs off Click and Click is desperately trying to get back so everyone's out of position. So the job they are tasked with is incredibly difficult and Forshaw might have made a difference last night, but I think it was such a stretched game. Like I say, I just think, do you know what? Go basketball and see how it goes. And yeah. maybe if he was fitter, he could play instead of yeah, Cook I, and it would be a bit more of a natural I, fit. I agree with that, that our attacking probably left us susceptible at the back because mm. we were so attacking so it's, it's just the way it goes and isn't it's it? a choice then isn't it it's do you want to attack mm. and be or do you not want to attack and be a bit more stable defensively or do you want to attack and I go mm. I know I know there's middle ground there but yeah if you, you say do you want what happened yesterday or do you want you know Ashley Westwood and Brownhill just sat in the middle yeah. Achieving nothing for Burnley, you know, is it's entertainment. You, you've got to be careful what you wish for. I think with these, some sometimes, don't you? Because it's, you know, the attacking side of it can be so good, and it does occasionally click into place and look just unstoppable. Yeah. But also, we also look <laughs> incapable of stopping teams at other points. Like we saw at opening day against Scum, the the period where we equalised, and then they just had about twenty minutes of walking through us, and it it happened to a certain extent in that that brief period with Villa yesterday. So it is terrifying to watch, though, when that <laughs> happens. Yeah. Um, Adrian does ask, why was Forshaw sitting on the bench when Coutinho ran as ragged for 20 minutes? I think purely that's just down to coming back from uh, from injury, isn't it? He tends not to throw people back in. The only one who ever generally does get thrown back in is Phillips. Yeah, and also I think it was Aileen that was marking Coutinho as well. And obviously he can change the shape or put different players in there to do different jobs. But if it's man-to-man and Aileen's Coutinho's man and you saw it with the goal, he just got turned because Coutinho's yeah. a really good player and he played a great pass after that as well. And again, it happens, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely does. Um, and yeah, Ailing is an interesting case in that you feel like he's probably hit his limit now, you know, given his age and uh, and the journey that he's been on. Um, it's a and, good limit. And yeah, I was going to say, you see it up against Coutinho and you go, oh God, he's absolutely had him on toast there. But then you remember he's not marking Coutinho every week, is he? And he's done perfectly serviceable job against a number of very good Premier League wide players. And yeah, Coutinho is a player as well who at his best can do that too the very best yeah, defenders 140 in the world. million wasn't it or something so daft. yeah it's it's a long way from Yeovil isn't it for, for Luke yeah. <laughs> so we, we should probably not be and, too harsh on him I suppose and it was Aileen who when we looked a bit stuck passing the ball around at the back who just nutmegged an attacker and carried the ball <laughs> to the opposite end of the pitch <laughs> and, so we, and go, we all went yeah. bloody hell Luke <laughs> <laughs> but, it was, but it was brilliant and it was yeah. um, it relieved pressure massively so yeah he got skinned by Coutinho it'll happen and um, Rafinha has had his off night, as we uh, we noted on the match ball last night. And a number of people have picked this out. Yeah, and you know, as uh, Benny <laughs> Benny looks, I think this this must be tongue in cheek. Uh, Rafinha was terrible, and we still got three. Take the money and run. Now that is a dangerous position to adopt, isn't it? <laughs> get, let's get the contract signed first. Martin, with a more sensible football point as well, suggesting that they might have, you know, given 
doubled up on him giving Rafinha more attention which does then create yeah. space elsewhere if you do that I don't know if that was actually true but I'm willing to say it it was it. interesting after I think it's, it's a after. theory that fits the evidence <laughs> and our bias so yes after the Newcastle game Bielsa was kind of saying oh Rafinha's our most unbalancing, unbalancing player and I'm not sure why he wasn't the one unbalancing them and it was all coming down the Harrison side but I guess that would back up that theory that if they were all concentrating on Rafinha there is more space for Harrison and Dan James and people like that good I'm glad we've solved that Rafinha <laughs> Rafinha you're free to go <laughs> um, go yeah. where no, no go any away I mean okay. you're free you're free to leave the station from your interrogation is okay. what I mean it was a police arrest metaphor okay not that he's committed any crimes whatsoever no. I'm aware of <laughs> no um, the starting 11 was picked out by a couple of people um, this is a Bielsa problem and it's one that I'm glad I don't have to deal with to be perfectly honest because you know we, we go back to where do you put Rodrigo exactly and who do you play again uh, up, up alongside him sorry you know do you want somebody who's a bit more midfield minded or attack minded and all the rest of it and this is what a squad is all about isn't it mm. the starting 11 was it was so, so predictable really wasn't <laughs> it I think we were like oh then I feel like Gellart probably probably needs to go up front but then it came around and you saw it and you went of course of course he's not changing it <laughs> he doesn't change it it's like he he's, he's a very He's a very calm man in a lot of ways, is Bielsa, isn't he? I think he's, despite the kind of a local reputation and everything, he's he, he's got a real faith in what he's doing, I think, in a way that none of us do. We're he all, we're he seems like, to exist constantly in the big picture sense. Yeah. Where he sees everything in a long-term way. Whereas we all panic, flap, flap around week <laughs> to week, which is, you know, it's perfectly it's perfectly allowable, I think, for fans because it's, it's kind of what you do, isn't it? But yeah, I'm, I'm sort of glad that the man in charge someone's a bit calmer <laughs> he's yeah isn't just going alright well I'll tell you what we'll change all that we, we, we've done it the other managers have done it in the past haven't they where you you'll get a bad result and they'll change like five players and then you'll lose again and then you think oh shit what do we do the week after then do we just make just keep making loads of changes and Whereas, I think sometimes managers do make changes to mask their own shortcomings maybe and again we, get, we haven't gone to Lampard yet but you do wonder like you know tinkering with systems whether we we played the three at the back at Newcastle having played a different system against Brentford the week before um, and you do wonder whether well we'll try this this week and then we'll try this this week and then it masks any you know having to justify what you're doing if you like because Bielsa's answer to plan A is to do plan A better if it doesn't work changing players as well it it moves the blame from the manager to the players as well, doesn't yeah, it? It's, yeah, yeah. it's going well. That he was in the team last week. That didn't. He didn't do well there, so he's coming out, and this player is going to do a better job this week. Whereas Bielsa it takes is, quite a lot to get dropped by Bielsa, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. He, he's got his favourites, hasn't it's he? The thing that once you're in his team, it's hard to get out. Mm. It's getting in the team that is the the very hard thing. Yeah. Mm. On that, actually, a couple of people um, just saying how good Strauch is as well. Yeah. <laughs> did, did, did we talk about him much last night? B uh, briefly. Kind of saying that we're laughing at Mings more. Aren't that we? he needs to stay in the team. Yeah, he's very, very good. Yeah, he's and and actually gives us some real threat from set pieces as well, which it feels like we've not had for quite a long time. Although he never seems to score from. Him. No, <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> he kind of is, gets in there, but he's uh, Cooper had a spell of doing that as yeah. well, where he'd, he'd constantly win headers in the six yard box, but they'd go over. And you'd be like, oh. Jason Pierce was the one, wasn't he? Be <laughs> on the end of every corner, and every corner would go over the bar. Your high water mark, Rob. <laughs> yeah. Jason Pierce. It's quite instructive actually, looking down the comments, and we do appreciate that we've had very little time to turn this around. So thank you to everybody who did come um, contribute that Coutinho's mentioned just by one person Jared Gillett gets a mention as well um, but it's all basically about Leeds players there's a mention of Villa's uh, cheating antics as well and uh, rolling around I think Buendia was probably the most culpable where it came to that but it's all about Leeds players and saying how good they were a couple of you know critics of like Melier's punching but again it's nothing really you know we always go by weight of the stuff that comes in and it's overwhelmingly positive stuff about Dan James and how much fun we are to, to watch it's nice. I was pleasantly surprised by seeing the positivity when I saw the prep sheet today. I mean, for a season that's going to probably just end in comforting mediocrity, touch wood, it has been bloody hard work. I long for mediocrity. <laughs> I, I long for mediocrity this season. So right? hopefully, yeah, hopefully now performances are improving and there's a little bit of space. Hopefully the second half of the season might be a bit more enjoyable than the first. The Square Ball Podcast. 